Welcome back. It's Total Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Set for first major conversation. Uh, the Nigerian Senate has transmitted 35 of the 44 Constitution Amendment bills to President Muhammad Buhari for assent. Um, for assent, rather, the lawmakers on Tuesday uh, directed the clerk of the National Assembly to transmit the 35 bills that have so far met the requirement of the provision of Section 9, Subsection 2 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, to the President for assent. The 35 bills have been considered by 27 state houses of assembly and approved by at least 24 state houses of assembly as required by law. The state assemblies, however, however, failed uh, to vote on the two bills that seek financial and legislative autonomy for local governments in Nigeria. Now, there has been a debate over the issue of autonomy for local governments in the country, which usually operate uh, joint accounts with the state governments. Uh, uh, but, of course, this debate is still ongoing because there will be none of that in the Nigerian constitution if the president um, pens his signature to the amendments. Joining us this morning to look at the failure to introduce financial and legislative autonomy uh, into the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, is human rights lawyer Justice Uhuebu. He joins us via Zoom from Lagos. Justice, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Hello, Justice Uhuebu. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you very much for your time, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Um, but seeing that the state houses of assembly um, are one of the legislative bodies closest to the people, um, those who are more closer to the people will be um, the uh, local government legislatures or local government councils. But the state houses of assembly are one of the closest to the people. And um, will you say that this rejection? of financial and legislative autonomy as an amendment to the CFRN 1999 um, is reflective of the will of the people? <laughs> well, uh, actually, it's laughable and uh, it's so unfortunate. Actually, they are supposed to be one of the close to the people. But the question is, in practice, is the, is the uh, state of the assemblies of various states, are they actually close to the people? And the answer is no. Because if they are close to the people, we won't be talking about this. They won't be rejecting what the people have been yearning for, what have been the aspiration of, of the general masses in Nigeria at all times. So it's so unfortunate that they are, they are representing themselves and not the people. Because if they are representing the people, you as a journalist, you can move out there and seek for public opinion. You will see that every Nigerian today wants local government autonomy as how it used to be in the past. That is so unfortunate that the governors are using them because they don't know their duty in the first place. Almost all the House of Assembly members of various states have come to errant boys to all the governors. And that is why we're getting this. Because the governors know that it's going to, to, to work against them with this issue of, uh, 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 is it... Um, is it consolidated uh, account or whatever name they call it, where governors will hijack monies meant for local governments and not dash the local governments a little. That is why you see all these things that have been played. And unfortunately, the members of the House Assembly uh, of various states are played into their hands. It's so unfortunate. This is not democracy at all. This is not democracy we have been yearning for. In fact, this is, this is against the rule of law, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. But um, I'd like you to also speak to the fact that if you also look at this, uh, some of the bills, I mean, 35 of them that were accepted out of, uh, you know, 44 of them, uh, you found out that the, this State House uh, of Assembly members gave a yes to, you know, uh, legislative autonomy for, I mean, autonomy for the legislatures and the State Houses. And also you have uh, autonomy also for, financial autonomy for, um, you know, the judiciary, amongst other issues. So I, I like you to, you know, juxtapose that with what they have done, even though it's not entirely clear who voted for what, and uh, it's also shredded in secrecy. Uh, you can't actually say which states or which state house assembly said yes or which did not say yes. That's also not, you know, uh, in, 
in, in public domain. But I'd like you to speak to that. They gave a yes to themselves to have financial autonomy. Uh, <laughs> what happens to you know, the development of uh, the local government, especially in 2023? What happens to it now? What becomes of us? If you look at the rural communities, sir, if you go to every rural community in Nigeria, not just in Lagos, you find that it's underdeveloped. Feeder roads are nothing to write home about. The primary health care, nothing to write home about. This should be the concern of local government, including primary education. All of these issues are just left there. So what becomes of it? Now that they have given a yes to financial autonomy for you know, the state house assemblies, I mean, uh, right? And a no to um, you know, local government autonomy. Well, if I, that's what I'm saying. It's so unfortunate. And if you understand, like you rightly said, uh, the, what they did was first of all to protect themselves because that, that, that is wickedness. I see it as wickedness. They are only interested in self. That is selfishness and wickedness because wickedness and selfishness work together. And that is why you see this. And like we know in Nigeria, the local governments are the ones that are the closest to the people. Period to this time, of course, we had the 1999 constitution, we had the 1979 constitution. Things have not been like this. The local governments before are the only uh, 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 authority that is very close to the people and knows the yearnings and aspirations of the people. But unfortunately, these people now, these cabals, I call them cabals, they came into power and tried to water down the powers of the local government by what they call, is it not the governor's forum or whatever they call it. And nobody is talking about that. Nobody is saying anything. You are talking about that uh, it's not in the public domain. People that voted no to it. For example, I'm from Imo State, and I'm away. It's I've been on the news everywhere that even Imo State has an assembly voted against financial autonomy of the local government. And we will soon get to know all of them. We will soon get to know the enemies of Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, these people are the real enemies of Nigeria. It's so unfortunate. What is happening to them? Now, how do you expect for Nigeria to have development in various local governments? There, no, there won't be development. Like you said, look at, go to the villages, go to local governments in almost all the states. It's underdeveloped. People are suffering on daily basis. No local health care, no education. You see children sitting on beer floor to have the education. In fact, they have killed the educational system of the local governments. And that is why you see private schools springing up on daily basis. And most of these people and government are also the owners of these private schools. So what are we saying? It's so unfortunate that these people have saddled themselves with impunity and selfishness. It's so unfortunate what we're experiencing today. For me, this is not democracy at all. Um, uh, do you feel that we've made some progress as far as... Um you know, strengthening democracy is concerned and that uh, the members of the House of Assembly deserve, uh, you know, a little pat on the back because of some of the things that they have been able to agree with the National Assembly. 35 out of 44 is not a small number. Um, if you look at some of the, uh, the, the bills accepted by or passed by the State House of Assembly agreeing with the National Assembly, things like, uh, you know, passed to summon the president, uh, things like, as Messi said, you have um, the autonomy for um, uh, uh, state legislatures, legislatures and the judiciary, um, things like state of the nation address, uh, deadline for um, uh, formation of cabinet, ministerial appointments, you know, and, and all that. Um, aren't these things we should come in and realize that uh, democracy takes time to mold? And um, we've, we've made some steps forward, a lot of steps forward in this regard with this cu current process. The truth is that if democracy to strive, you must first of all start from the grassroots. And that is what is called democracy. And that is why in simple analogy, in simple definition, the, the, the democracy is defined as the government of the people by the people and for the people. Now, what we what we're seeing is they actually the government of the people, by the people and for the people. The answer is no, who are these people we are talking about? The masses, the local people. People in the rural areas, these are the people we're talking about. But, ju but Justice, is, is this, isn't this a case of um, glass half full? And let's look at the brighter side. You know, because if you look at things, um, 
like uh, uh, a financial autonomy for state legislative messages talked about already, enforcement of legislative summon, uh, which you're very well aware of, um, you know, inauguration of members elect. Um, you have, uh, for instance, deletion of, of reference in the constitution to the provisions of the Criminal Code, Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Act, Criminal Procedure Code or Evidence Act, which you're very well aware of. Um, you have things like um, expansion of the interpretation of judicial office, appointment of the secretary of the National Judicial Council, devolution of powers when it comes to airports, devolution of powers, fingerprints, identification, and criminal records, devolution of powers, correctional services, um, devolution of powers, railways, devolution of powers, national grid system, which is what people have been clamoring for for a long time. Um, shouldn't we say we've taken some steps forward and acknowledge that and celebrate that? For now, any step you take that will not first of all affect the people in the local areas positively, for me, is not a step. You see, as far as I'm concerned, these are all just a bugara of names and what you intend to achieve. And all. You don't start from up down. You start from down to up. And that's what you're saying. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing you can do without the local government's authority. Leaving them, ignoring them, these are where the people are, the people reside. The totality of the people, the whole number of the people resides here. That is what we are saying. Whatever you are doing, <clears throat> without, first of all, considering the masses, is neither here nor there. So this issue of, uh, are you not going to talk about uh, financial autonomy for the state of assemblies as an achievement? It's not an achievement, because this is what they have done to themselves. They have done giving themselves a, another good allocation. If you remember, <clears throat> part of the amendment proposal was even the issue of independent candidates. And nobody is even talking about all those ones. We're talking about democracy. We're talking about how this country... Justice Uwebu, apologies. I think uh, we seem to have a network freeze. Okay. Are you there, Justice? Okay, um, we seem to have a network freeze. It happens from time to time um, all over the world. But uh, we hope to get him back as quickly as possible. I am told that Justice Uwebu, a uh, human rights lawyer, our guest on the first uh, discussion this morning, is back. Um, Mr. Uwebu, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So you, you are making a point. Yeah, I'm saying that the first of all, if we want to get it right, we must first of all get it right from the grassroots. Without that, there's nothing we are doing. The issue of, uh, of autonomy, financial autonomy to the state of assemblies, to me, is not an achievement. Well, um, as, as it is now, uh, let's also look at it. Do you think that uh, at this period, 35 of these bills are expected to be transmitted to the president for us? And, and do you think that anything can actually change? Is there a window that, you know, uh, maybe with all of the concerns that have been raised by Nigerians, uh, there might just be a way to salvage the situation. Well, this is the time we will, will call on every Nigerian to come out openly and reject this nonsense thing they are doing. Because if we for us to get it right, we must first of all get it right at the grassroots, which is the local government's authority. So whatever thing they are doing, as far as I'm concerned, is neither here nor there. Now all Nigerians should come out now in one voice and speak and possibly have a rally and possibly go and meet every state government, make a rally, make a march to every house of assembly and all the government house for them to know that we have rejected this, that first of all, for you to do anything or talk about any amendment, the, the, the autonomy of the local government must first of all be paramount before you consider any other thing. Mm. But, but Justice, interesting point you've made, um, uh, uh, which brings us to the question, uh, are Nigerians really aware and even interested in this process? Okay, because they didn't start today, it started at least two years ago. Now, I, I, I was at um, one of the public hearings, you know, the Senate had its, the local government had its, they were done on zonal basis. So for, for instance, the one in Port Harcourt, which I attended, had people coming from Bayelsa State, for instance. Um, we don't expect everyone from Bayelsa State to come, but for the people in Port Harcourt, the hall, which is a very big hall, was not full. And uh, the, 
the members, uh, you know, the legislators who came to carry out that zonal here, public hearing, did everything, stayed there for a couple of days throughout the day. And, you know, people were not really, really interested, you know, because I expect to see more people. <coughs> now you're talking about a provision, an amendment to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, that will benefit the grassroots. And we're not seeing anybody saying anything about it. The National Assembly has, they've done their part. The State House Assembly, they've done their part. The bill ha is on the table of Mr. President. It is for him to take his presidential pen. I don't know if it's black, green, or blue, or red. Uh, that green pen, yes, to sign, and then it becomes law. So nothing can be done. So what do you say to the, the lack of the, the apparent, yeah, yeah, the yeah. seeming apathy of Nigerians to this process? No, no, I, 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 won't, I, won't, I won't say it that way or agree entirely with that. The truth is this. There has not been enough publicity for this exercise. Just as there was, there was a lot of publicity. I, I remember it was all over the media space, at least in the city I mentioned. Can, you I, know, can, can, yes. I, can, can I shock you? Can I shock you? There was publicity all over the media. Now, the question is this. Those people in the local areas, in the local governments, in the villages, that do not have access to this media publication you're talking about, what happens to them? Justice, what about but those in the cities? They do. Excuse justice, me, they do. Me, they do, me, Justice. Excuse me. Excuse, can, I, can, I, can I finish? You remember that during election or during campaign, like we are talking now, all these people that are in government today, that want to be in government, they will visit all the works. They will go to all the villages and campaign. Then when it comes to what that will benefit the people, you will no longer apply the same method. But, 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 but ju Justice, we, we, I, I was I part... Justice, we, 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 what I'm trying to listen to me. You are a journalist. You are a journalist. Yes. We have what we call NUA, National Orientation Agency. Where are they? Have you heard about them for the past five years? Are they saying anything? How are they sensitizing the people? And if you remember, we have National Orientation Agency in all the local governments. And their duty or their job is to sensitize the people, to carry orientation of what the government wants to do. Now, today, you are telling me that you are relying on radio and television to educate the people. And you and I know that how many of these House Assembly members always have town hall meetings with their constituencies? Justice, the process started from the National what Assembly. Yeah, Justice, wait, the, the process started from the National Assembly. Yeah, with the, with the Senate and the House of Representatives each having their zonal uh, uh, public hearings. <laughs> And I'm saying from that point, what I noticed was that the, the public did not participate in it fully. I expect to see um, there's a hall. There's a hall. Um, yeah. No, no, I'm just Can trying to, 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 to make, ask you another question. Okay? Um, and there's a, a big hall that in, in, in Port Harcourt that was meant to have been used. And I thought it was going to be full. You know, we went to cover the event and there will be people outside. Um, but what happened? It was, it was not full. Okay, and what I'm saying is that we made a lot of the media did its job. Um, I don't know about the National Orientation Agency. If you want to talk about access to the media, those in the rural areas are listening to their radios. I'm a media practitioner. I can tell you we have calls from villages around Lagos State, around River State, you know, in other parts of the country. They listen. But let's say we, we, we're talking about those in the cities alone. Justice, those even in the cities are also... Um, subjects and members and residents and citizens of local government areas. They get the services of local government areas. If you use Port Harcourt as a case study, you have the Obiapo local government area, you have Port Harcourt city local government area, you have Ikwe local government area, you have Oibo local government area, these are urban centers, you have LMA local government area. These are urban centers. You are going too far. Can I tell you something? Uh, you are not a politician, as you may know, except you are maybe I know that some of you know what these politicians do, but at times you people don't want to say it simply that the way you, it is. But I will have to tell you this. When some of these things like these are to happen, some of these, what they do is to go and invite their party members and their loyalists to, to come there, and they will pretend as if they are the public. They are not the public. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I am a Nigerian. I am close to the grassroots. I know what is happening. So let us stop pretending in this country. Call a town hall meeting today. All the people you see there are party members. You will not see people in the rural areas because they were not informed. You are saying that you are a media practitioner. These things are in the domain. If it is in the domain, how many people in your locality today listening is listening to this program we are doing now? 
I'm asking you a question. A lot of people, people watch, listen to radio. I, I, I am privileged. A lot of people listen to radio. I'm privileged to be learned or to be educated. How many of us? So, many so, um, um, yes, uh, what would have stopped, what would have stopped so, people so like justice, yourself? Justice, people like yourself. Maybe, justice, maybe the Nigerian bar. What would have stopped the Nigerian bar association? The what would have stopped the Nigerian Medical Association, the Nigerian Bar Association, Civil Society, NLC, those of you who are aware, from going to the House of Assembly to hold placards to say, no, we will not allow you, our members, um, and uh, allow, go, go away with this. We want you to approve and start uh, across all the state houses of assembly across the country. What would have stopped you from uh, doing mean, that? We, we need to move we away from this. We have done it several in this country. You are away. We have done it several in this country. You are away. You will, oh, now you know that we, ha we are in the era. Justice, uh, we need to move away from this can now. can get their way at any time they want it. Justice, we need to move away from this now. But I like you. This would be the last answer from us as we coast it down because we have a next guest who's a standby, you know, to join us as we look at all the issues. But uh, now this is what it is. I'm very concerned about uh, what becomes of development for us in 2023 in our local government. And we have been told in elementary government that the essence of the local government is to bring government closer mm. to the people. So now that, you know, uh, financial autonomy and administration uh, for local government has been rejected by state houses of assembly. By implication, it means that the governors also have rejected it. Uh, what does this mean for development? Well, it means that we'll, it means that the country will keep on going down the drain. <laughs> that that what we call uh, yes, that what in in economy that what we call a lot of diminishing return, and that is what we're going to get in 2023, whether we believe it or not. We are saying we want change. You see people, you see everybody campaigning outside there. People, many people do, are not talking about this. It's just like what we're saying. As far as I'm concerned, it is the wickedness and selfishness of the governors that have brought about this, that are giving birth to this. And nobody is talking about the governors. Nobody is talking about anything. Because, like I said earlier, because the, era, the, 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 the House of Assembly members have come to errant voice to all the governors. Why are they rejecting it in the first place? Why would the local government not have financial autonomy as it used to be before? And that is why we're not developing and we're talking. This is the wake-up call to every Nigerian. An election is forthcoming so that people can be, can, can, can be man enough to elect people in the, in the various states of assemblies that know their owners, that know why they are going there, that know what they are going there to do, and not stooge that governors will have pick and go and put in the House of Assemblies. That is what right. we're giving rise to this. Justice Uwe, we well, thank you very much for your time. We sincerely appreciate your in-depth and expert analysis as always, and look forward to having you next time. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure once more. All right. All right, then. Still ahead on the program, we have discussions on, of course, the interest rate to increase recently by the Monetary Policy Committee. Nigeria's interest rate, um, the, the benchmark interest rate currently stands at 17.5%. We'll be right back. <laughs>